Today, I'm reviewing a quirky little tool that's found its way into my bag. As I've fine-tuned my work as a cinematographer, I've increasingly explored the importance of texture in an image. Now, most of the time, I'm just trying to get the basics of the shot. I want it in focus and well exposed without blowing my highlights or creating depthless blacks. You're making sure that your white balance is correct, and if you have the bandwidth, maybe you're playing around with colors on set, adding gels or changing the color temperatures to bring more visual interest to the scene. And maybe, in post, you're adding some film grain, though I'll admit that I've never been satisfied with the digital noise of fake grain. Now maybe, just maybe, you've been experimenting with haze or fog to give dimensionality to your background. But the problem with fog machines is that they're big and they're cumbersome and they're slow to operate and fog is challenging to control. Now most machines typically use 400 watts of power or more, so you also need a wall socket to plug the unit into. Now you can buy it in a can, but that's expensive, and if you use too much of it, the surfaces around you become wet and glossy and everything starts just to feel a little bit thick. And then I discovered the Microfogger 2 by WorkScience.com. It's tiny. At 5 inches by 1.5 by 2, it's the smallest fogger I've seen anywhere, and it's battery powered. Now you never really want to drop any piece of electronic equipment, but it's nice when it feels like it won't shatter if it's tipped over. The microfogger is easy to operate. It heats up quicker than a traditional fogger and is ready to produce smoke roughly 30 seconds after you switch it on. It produces a surprising amount of fog for its size. The amount is much less than a full-size fogger, but it's similar to the haze in a can products. It's not silent, but it's quiet compared to a full-sized unit. You can hold it in your hand and the tip gets warm, but it won't burn you, and the casing doesn't heat up at all. The Fogger 2 comes with a remote control, so you can put it somewhere on set and fire it up from a distance. Operation is simple and yet somehow mysterious. It's really important that you read the manual and understand how to use it safely and not destroy the unit. The power button switches it on and off, but unlike most technology, you press it five times quickly. And that's because the power button also starts the smoke, so a long press with a hold will produce smoke. There are two smaller buttons for adjusting the volume and flow of smoke through a rather confusing system. Now, I'm not sure how volume and flow are two different things here, but the remote control helps simplify things to just three power settings that range from an unattended cigarette to a gushing pipe. The LED lights change color and flash and can tell you a whopping 14 different things about the unit, from battery level to heating coil problems. Which brings me back to the importance of reading the manual and maybe saving a copy of it on your phone. Now the big question I know everyone has at this point is price, and it's not inexpensive. The Microfogger 2 comes in at about 150 bucks. If you're used to the cheap $40 foggers that are made for Halloween effects, then the amount seems crazy. And I'll admit that I anguished over this purchase. But when I compared it to the Haze in a Can products that can cost anywhere from 12 to 30 bucks a pop, it suddenly seemed like a reasonable investment, especially considering that it's one quarter of the size and you can refill it for about 50 cents a charge. Then I came across the Tiny S, a battery powered fog machine for 800 bucks. And I thought, maybe I should bite the bullet here. You've also got professional systems like the Antari for roughly a grand. Now these will produce volumes of smoke that you can use both indoors and outside to create a foggy forest, but they're really something you want to rent, not buy. Now the unit does have a couple of downsides beyond the cost. Due to the small size, you can only run the fogger for 10 second increments. It pauses automatically after that. The heating coil is burning off the fog juice, so it needs time to recoat that coil. After 10 more seconds, you can fire it up again. At this size, it's not going to fill a ballroom with haze or create a giant billow of smoke for your talent's entrance, but it will create a nice haze in a small room, and it's great for interesting product shots. According to the manufacturer, you need to put some care into the unit when it's not in use. First, you need to empty out the fogger if you're not going to use it for a couple of weeks. No leaving the juice inside until the next shoot. And you should charge it every three weeks or so to protect the battery. The makers also recommend using their fog juice because the liquid is thicker. And I've yet to experiment with other brands that are frankly cheaper and more convenient to buy. Now the unit came with an extra heating coil, so I guess I can expect that to wear out after some amount of use too. We'll see. The bottom line? Well, the size is incredibly attractive. If you shoot products or music videos or narrative films, then the convenience factor may make this a great creative tool. 
Even if haze isn't something you normally use, you can throw it into your bag for the odd occasion when it is useful. Just, you know, don't forget to charge it regularly. It's not cheap, but it's comparatively a great deal, especially if you value a battery-powered system. So while I've never felt a huge need for haze in my shoots, I did decide to take the plunge and shell out a significant amount of cash for this unit. I'm hoping that it makes itself useful.